Traditional healers in South Africa are set to undergo a major shift. New amendments to the Traditional Health Practitioners Act is expected to come into effect early next year and will require these practitioners to register with the Interim Traditional Health Practitioners Council. Uh, this move aims to modernize the traditional healing sector, aligning it with global health standards and ensuring that the safety and efficacy of traditional medicine and medicine practices. So let's now bring into this conversation the Interim Traditional Health Practitioners Council spokesperson, uh, Sheila Mbelekama, for an update on these regulations. A very good morning to you. Thank you so much for making time for us. What necessitated a change in legislation around, um, the, around the work that is being done by traditional workers? Good morning to you and good morning to the listeners and thank you for having me. In actual fact, there is no change that is happening. What is happening is that um, as per the legislature, the uh, THP Act number 22 of 2007, the government uh, is actually trying to ensure that um, traditional health practitioners as a profession, as professionals themselves, they are able to, to register with the, the council it has taken too long from 2007 to date. So it has been an outstanding, a, 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 you know, a mission that needs to happen. So therefore, what happened when we were appoint, appointed uh, in April last year, we, we took a decision uh, that um, there should be regulations because the Act stipulates that um, there should be a regulation in this uh, practice. So we are aware that it has an ancient practice that has been mm. there. However, because it, we are dealing with the human lives here and it is the act that is in place that needs also to be respected and to be followed. So then the regulations are set so that we, are, we um, ensure that we register the THPs in the country. Those that have gone through the process of properly authentical training in the ways of indigenous healing and to ensure that they are brought into the space and properly respectfully you know and assigned to their profession and yeah yep. able to function like any other normal council like nurses council doctors council as well and to get that status you know in the country okay so what is it that we're trying to address here as earlier, you alluded correctly that um, what we are trying to address is to ensure that um, the 80% of communities that are uh, receiving these services, they are protected in the space and the space itself, it's conducive for, as a profession, that uh, there's efficacy, there's also uh, in a sense that uh, uh, communities would be approaching it in a way that uh, it is not detrimental or dangerous mm -hmm. to approach. But we are ensuring that those that have been trained, uh, they should be able to practice and respectfully able to deal with, as they were doing, and managing the health care of our communities, but at least be properly engaged so that where there are, ga there are gaps, we are able to train them as well, but also align them with the health care system and include them in the healthcare system, collaborating and ensure that in policy development, their voice is also heard. Yeah, and, th and then with, with that said, in terms of the rights of a patient, because we know, for instance, with, uh, with, with public health, if something happens to me in the hospital, there's, <clears throat> there is maladministration or malpractice that takes place. Um, during um, administering of drugs or, what, <clears throat> or whatever could be taking place um, at the time. If I do suffer complications, I can bring a case against the state. In this particular case, if the health practitioner that I have consulted has administered the wrong medication to me or the wrong herbs to me, do I have any recourse against that particular individual? As said, as we are saying, those that will be registered because the act says you cannot practice if you are not registered under the Act, Act number 22 of 2007. Also says the council should be the one that is registering, which looks at what exactly you are saying. Where people, where they are maltreated, they have the right to say, Goko so and so that have attended on this on this date and has administered this and this, which maybe has a, an effect, you know, negatively or whatsoever. So it will be the the role of the council to intervene as well, like any other council. 
yeah. that uh, uh, like the health council and the nurses council to ensure that there's, as we said, there's safety and there's efficacy in the space where THPs are practicing. Yeah, but would it be the same as the medical claims um, that are made in the in the public sector? At the moment, because we are still undergoing this process, uh, we hopefully, because this is one of the council, like any other council in the country, and it will operate as such. Okay. Um, one of the other issues is listening to you speak about um, the, 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 the traditional health practitioner must be properly and authentically trained. Who decides what properly and authentically trained looks like? Who has the manual and who's the custodian of that manual, if such a thing even exists? Uh, if, you know, the fortunate part with the traditional healing uh, practices in the country, this is an ancient indigenous space and it's known, even though laws are not written in a way, remember that the training may differ from, you know, Ugukchwasa Umda, Ugukchwasa Singuni and that and that may not be the same. But the act in terms of the, uh, the, the, the regulation as specific to say, when one goes to a training being Isangoma, this you need to ensure that there's proper teaching in terms of diagnosis, meaning divination, and also knowledge of immunity and how you package, how you harvest, you know, and all those things that are relevantly that a, a Sangoma going out needs to, to be look like. At the moment, as it is an ongoing process, we are busy with the uh, the process of looking at actually uh, what is it or that needs to happen when one goes epithelioni or when one is said to be a traditional bed attendant. So we are looking at the the scope of practice at the moment. Yeah. Uh, what if my Gobela says that actually we don't want to follow a certain route? This is how I believe we should be following things. And this is the word that I'm getting from my ancestors, which could be totally different um, to the standardized categories that you've spoken about now. I, I think we are not interfering with the issue of the spirituality. That one, it's, it's a space where you cannot regulate. But we can regulate on how uh, students or how amateurs are trained and what needs to be done. Because at the moment, we are receiving a space where one has gone epithelium, but comes out without knowing even immunity, just basic immunity on how you, you administer to, or also not knowing on how you divine. So this is a space where we are saying, these 12 months that we are asking you to do, at least ensure that when a person is it graduates, at least is able to basically to know how the divination, how to consult in a traditional way, and also how to administer and dispense medicine. Yeah. Um, one the, of the other, we are not interfering with it. Okay, with the spirituality, you're not interfering with it. Um, one of the yeah. other points in terms of the recommendations of this of the new regulation is that if somebody wants to be, a, and, and I'd love to hear your confirmation around this, wants to be Isangoma or a herbalist, um, that they must be at least 18 years old. Is that the truth? It, it is a truth, but we should understand that you cannot want to be Isangoma. It's, this is the calling. Yeah. We are saying in an event where you go a person, you should be at least over 18. Because remember, in the space, there's also uh, issues of gaining. And the act in terms of offense, it, it says when whoever that goes to a training or practices should be registered in this act, in the act. But also, if you practice for gain and not being registered, it creates, it is an offense. So we are also looking at an 18, 18 years old person will be able to stand in an event where there's crisis because that person is regarded as an adult. So under age, it, we are not recommending that they will be registered. We are not saying they cannot be trained, but we're saying in terms of registration, we're only going to be registered over 18 yeah, um, and the difficulty around this is, of course, that sometimes you do find um, children, sometimes even as young as being in primary and in, um, in secondary school, having this particular calling. What happens to those children? They're going to go through, they're going to go through, the, uh, go through the training, but once they start practicing uh, while still being under the age of 18, will they be in conflict with the law? When we are aware that because of the practice itself, the way it stands, 
any child we are born with this, uh, yeah. uh, I mean, the gift itself, the calling. But if one needs to go uh, 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 be, to become Itwasa, because this is not a individual act, it is a communal act, it is a family act. So we then would assign a, an adult to ensure that, um, obviously, if they failed Ugutiba Shehisi and the child Shehisi meaning stop the the whatever the process that is happening for the child to go in, then the child when it happens that uh, needs indeed to undergo training because of the health reasons. Sometimes it can someone pass on or die if you're not going. We are not going to go through this. However, when that child goes to a, in the in the space of Ukobela, at least there should be a note that referring that so and so has gone to this space and is trained. However, we because in the training process there is an interaction with other patient, then that is a problem. But in healing, like in hospital, healing a person is something else. But now when it was a has to practice with the lives of other person of other people becomes a problem there. So hence we are saying it's an it's ongoing discussion, but we therefore saying at least let the child be over 18, you know, to be able to practice as a traditional health practitioner. Without saying a child cannot have a, a calling, you know, yeah. below the age of, of 18. Uh, don't you run the risk also in conclusion of actually distorting our um, our traditional knowledge systems and trying to box it almost into a, a blueprint that has been adopted by Western media, uh, sorry, Western medicine. We are trying to ensure that the community is safe in the space. We have a lot of charlatans in the space now. The practice itself is under siege. So something needs to happen. Communities need to have a choice to go to a traditional practitioner in a space where it's safe to do so. I don't see, because if you look at the history of traditional practices, what is happening today, it has never happened. Now we see things happening in the way that they, it's happening. Because someone can wake up in the morning and claim to have been called to be a healer and wake up just like that without an understanding of immunity, diagnosis, and, 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 and. So what we are saying, because this is an ancient practice, let's protect our heritage, let's protect this dignity, and ensure that the integrity of those that have been trained and authentically practicing, which are in numbers, that they are doing good work there. They should not be shadowed by charlatans that, are, that have entrusted the space and are destroying their dignity. In further protection, the heritage, of course, you need to regulate that space. Thank you so much for your time. Um, Sheila Mbelekama, who is the spokesperson for the Interim Traditional Health Practitioners Council, what do you make of this particular move? Um, do you think it's a step in the right direction or does it also run the risk of distorting our indigenous knowledge systems? We're going to go to a quick ad break. When we come back, Andy Mahamba will bring you the latest from the world of sports. Stay tuned.